There's a problem with dependency injection. Imagine you're about to enter a dark forest and you have to fight creatures like vampires and zombies and werewolves. Now, you'd want to choose the right weapon for each one, right? Garlic for vampires, silver bullets for werewolves and, well, anything sharp for zombies. But here's the catch. You have to pick your weapon before you even enter the forest. Now, garlic won't exactly help you against a zombie, right? So how do you know which weapon to pick? The solution? the factory pattern and hitting the like button. So let me show you the problem that I saw countless times in the last 12 years of working with .NET professionally. You see, I've got a weapon service here to be more exact, an interface of that weapon service with only one method, the get weapon method returning a string. And for this interface, I got three implementations, the vampire weapon service returning garlic, werewolf returning the silver bullet and the zombie weapon service returning a chainsaw. Now we have to register these services in the program CS. Right, so we can write builder services at scoped iWeapon service vampire weapon service. So that's exactly the problem. This setup only allows you to pick the weapon before you run the application. That's like choosing your weapon before you even enter the forest. Now, what if you encounter a zombie, but you've already picked garlic? And this is where things can get tricky, not just in this spooky forest, but also in real world situations, like choosing different payment processes, for instance, at runtime, like credit card, PayPal, or Stripe based on the user's input. And if you're interested in solving problems like these in general, you want to become a better .NET and Blazor developer, and you want to dive deep into topics like clean architecture, for instance, then you might want to check out the .NET Web Academy. Currently, you can get 10% off with the code Halloween24 until this Friday. So check out the link in the video description and maybe listen to what the real students here have to say. I earn more because of attending to the courses. I made a facility management software and it works and it's fast. The client is really happy. Thanks to your masterclass, I'm able to get a better understanding on what clean architecture is. Trust me, it's a different feeling when working with Blazor simply because Patrick simplifies the complex things. For me, it's about the gold wrap this is. Now, the factory pattern solves our dependency injection problem by letting you choose the right weapon at runtime, depending on which creature you encounter. So let's add a factory to dynamically select the correct weapon based on the monster you're fighting. So in the solution explorer, I already got a services folder, and in here now I create a new item, and this is now our I weapon factory interface similar to the service right but this time it's a factory and here now we create only one method and this thing returns then an iweapon service so i weapon service call this create and this thing just grabs a string which is the creature type of course we could also use an enum here this is totally up to you but to keep this example simple let's just use this string and now the implementation so in our services folder we add a new item and this is now our weapon factory and this thing of course implements the i weapon factory we implement the interface automatically so here now we have our create method but first we need something else and this would be an i service provider so private read only i service provider service provider and as you can see, the tooltip says, this thing defines a mechanism for retrieving a service object. That is an object that provides custom support to other objects. So in the end here, we want to get the actual iWeapon service that we need for the correct monster. All right, so now let's create a constructor to inject this thing. And now we can work with that. So now here in our create method, we write the following, just return based on the given creature type with switch, we say the following. If we've got a vampire, then we return service provider. And then we can use the method get required service of type vampire weapon service. And that's it. Now let's do the same for the other two. So here now we've got our werewolf and zombie and the corresponding weapon service and the zombie weapon service. And by default, we simply throw a new argument exception, let's say, where we return the message unknown creature type. 
All right, now this is our factory. Of course, we also have to register certain stuff now in our program CS. And instead of the iWeapon service here, what we want to register is the iWeapon factory. Like that. And here also, of course, the implementation class, weapon factory. But we also need the other services. So here now we also add services at scoped. And then, for instance, the vampire weapon service. And exactly the same for the werewolf, of course. And then the zombie. All right, that's it. And now let's take this to the next step and use a web API. So I've already got a battle controller here. And as you can see, we are injecting now the iWeapon factory and we have a fight method where we create the service that we need based on the creature type. And then in the end, we get the service, we get the proper weapon and then return the string with the creature type and the weapon. And when we test this, for instance, with the zombie, we hit execute, we get fighting a zombie with chainsaw. Now, if you find the factory pattern useful, you might want to check out this video here about repository patterns, which shows you when and when not to use them.